For about six years, I lived in Tucson, Arizona. My home was about a half mile away from a Benedictine monastery. Each morning, I'd go for morning prayer, which was a time of chanting and silent reflection. It was a really beautiful way to begin my morning and, and help me to be really centered for the day. But the monastic community met for a time of, of gathering for prayer even before morning prayer. Morning prayer was the second service of the day. Much earlier was something called vigil. Vigil was a time of, of silent meditation where people would gather and simply sit together in meditation. I went a few times to vigil, but I'll be honest, it was too early for me. Every time I went, I fell asleep and I didn't want to snore in public, so I started with morning prayer. Today, I want to talk about the importance of keeping vigil as a spiritual practice. And I want to do that in the context of talking about my trip to Yellowstone National Park. While I do that, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel, as well as to click the bell so you're notified of future videos. I spent my spring break at Yellowstone National Park. I went to go watch wildlife along the northern corridor of Yellowstone. I stayed in Gardner, Montana at that entrance and would leave the hotel in early in the morning, 7, 7.30, while the sky was still pretty dark. And heading into the park, you know, I'd drive past uh, deer and proghorns and see some rabbit. Eventually, I'd run into some bison. And I talked about the bison in the video, what bison can teach us about mindfulness. Be sure to check that out. But going along, what I was really looking to see were the wolves and, and I wanted to see bears coming out of hibernation. And I was able to do both. There was only one road open to drive and so it was a lot of driving back and forth on that road. But at one of the overlooks, you could pull over and you were looking across a ravine from that point. And on the other side of the ravine was a barren mountain going up and midway up, there was a small cave, just a hole of a cave that was there. And that was a bear's den, a black bear, a mother bear with her two yearling cubs, a sow and two year old cubs. And they were not fully out of hibernation yet. The, the mother bear would stick her head out, especially in the afternoon sun, and just let her head rest on the entrance of the den and get some sun. Occasionally you'd see one or two, one or the other of the cubs try to stick their head out as well. But they're really just starting to wake up from hibernation. And people would gather at that lookout with their scopes and binoculars and try to see any movement, hoping that that would be the day when they would really come out of the den. There was a lot of excitement even when the mother bear even just turned her head a little bit. It was looking for something to happen. We were keeping vigil together. Another place where I kept vigil, but for many more hours, was at Blacktail Pond at the overlook there. We sat at the overlook, the pond was below us, and on the other side was a mountain going up. And from that vantage point, we could see wolves at different times. They would show up when they were going to show up. We waited there. We'd arrive around three or four in the afternoon and stay until dark. We sat there at the overlook, watching, waiting, anticipating, hoping for some movement. It didn't happen every day. But many days there were wolves who would come and we were hoping for a grizzly bear too because we knew we were in a grizzly bear's territory. One day I happened to take a walk. I, I needed to go down the road a bit and water my favorite tree. And when I was coming back, everybody started yelling to me to come and hurry back. And I got there as fast as I could because I didn't want to miss whatever it was that was happening. And what had occurred in my brief walk away was that one wolf pack started making its way down the valley towards the pond. And the wolf pack whose territory it was, they were on the other side of the mountain and they were coming down to see who these encroachers were. 
And eventually there wasn't a fight, but the pack whose territory it was chased the other wolves off. And it happened very, very quickly. You see, that's the thing with keeping vigil. You don't know when something's going to happen. You watch and you wait and you anticipate that there's the possibility that something may occur. Keeping vigil is a spiritual practice found in multiple traditions. Buddhists understand this in terms of the understanding of what enlightenment is about. To be enlightened is to be awake. To be awake is to be mindful and aware, to keep watch, to be alert, to be conscious of what's happening around you. Some Native American tribes had a, have had a cultural practice called seeking a vision, a vision quest. And the vision quest would happen for young people before adulthood. It was their entry into adulthood where they would go and be separated for three or four days and fast and seek a vision that would characterize their adult life. They would watch and wait, anticipating that it would happen for them. And Christians know the words of Jesus to watch and wait to be alert because you don't know the hour when God will come. All these traditions indicate the importance of alertness, of being awake, of watching, of keeping vigil. What is it that we're waiting for? What is it that we're watching for? What's the purpose of vigil? Vigil is meant to open us so that we live with a different kind of consciousness each day. For people who are deistic, they may be waiting for a sign of God's presence. For other people, they may be waiting for something to manifest, something to manifest about love, kindness, grace, goodness, healing. But the spiritual practice of simply sitting and being open and waiting in silence is about anticipating something to come into life. And it's meant to open us further, to, live, to help us to live differently in a way that's open to life. Anyone who watches wildlife, whether it's birds or going to a national park to see wildlife, knows that what they do most is sit and watch and wait and keep vigil. And that's what I did in Yellowstone. And it reminded me of the importance of doing that in my own spiritual life, to anticipate goodness, because goodness is there to be found in life. Thanks for being here today. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it, leave me some comments about your experience in keeping vigil. And know that I really appreciate your time today. Thank you.